Hello, everyone. Helen Yu at SAP Sapphire. Uh, I'm here with Andrea Walsh. Well, today I'm not at SAP. We're going to unpack business AI together. But before we do that, let's have Andrea introduce himself and then share about your role at SAP. And then tell us what BIM AI is. Of course, happy to. So, hey, everyone. My name is Andreas Welch. I lead AI marketing at SAP. And in that role, my team and I help our customers and the market understand where and how you can get value from AI that's integrated into SAP's application. So AI and SAP, we call it business AI because it's AI built for business. It's relevant, it's reliable, and it's responsible because it's built into the applications that business users use every day, whether in finance or supply chain or procurement, it's AI everywhere natively embedded. It's reliable because we ground it in our customers' business data individually to make sure that the results are also reliable. And lastly, it's responsible based on deep and strong AI ethics principles and, and values and guidelines and that it honors data privacy and security all from the ground up. That's awesome. Speaking of business AI, uh, we've heard so much about Drew, right? It was launched last September. Is that interchangeable or what is the difference? That's a great question. So Joel is SAP's AI co-pilot that we're embedding across our entire suite of products. Now, Joel helps you get work done faster, get smarter insights and better outcomes in all of while you're still in control and do that in the flow of your work. So we see business AI as SAP's overall approach, Joel as the co-pilot that makes it happen, and then additional AI capabilities built into SAP's applications. Well, that's phenomenal to hear, right? Tell us more about the impact of business AI has made for manufacturers. Happy to. Look, manufacturing is a complex industry, as, it's in, uh, as many of, of you know. So, for example, we're helping sales reps get uh, information a lot more quickly and help their customers a lot more quickly with the help of AI and, and generative. For example, one of our products that we call Intelligent Product Recommendations, Generative AI helps sales reps find the best product that they can recommend to their customers. Now, in manufacturing, there are many different product variations. So, it's harder to, to find what is the right configuration for my customer. Mm -hmm. Now the sales rep can only enter the, the information very simply and describe um, what the customer is looking to achieve. Generative AI analyzes it, narrows down the, the number of different product configurations, so the sales rep can give those recommendations to their customer more quickly and select the right product. That's interesting, and thank you for sharing that use case. What about customer experience in person, especially for retailers or e-commerce? Yeah, wonderful. But so also there, we're, we're seeing tremendous opportunities for generative AI that, that helps e-commerce teams. Now, there's so much data, so much rich data, so much good data in SAP systems already. For example, in, in our customer experience um, portfolio that, that our customers use. So we've added AI and generative AI into it um, to, to help teams create better product descriptions, uh, create social media posts, blog posts, all combining the data that is in their systems and make it really, really relevant. Now, if you then also look at the customer service and customer support side of it, of, of retail, Joel, our AI co-pilot, helps shared service agents get information faster about individual cases, about the questions that their customers are raising, so they can uh, cut down the, the, the time to get back to their customers by more than 30%. Wow, that's amazing. Okay. So I ran into a, quite a bit of supplier quite a few manufacturers here at the conference, and uh, supply chain remains on the line. So tell us more about the impact of the AI on supply chain. So look, in, in Europe, we're working with large automotive companies on a use case um, in, in logistics. We have a product that we call SAP Transportation Management. And our customers in automotive are receiving thousands of shipments on, a, on any given day, right? That arrive on trucks and, and in their plants. And there's a logistics clerk that now needs to check the, the paperwork that comes with the truck. Are there really 50 axles for, for this vehicle? Are there 50, really 50 motors on, on this trailer? And then, you know, check off the information, scan the document, and turn it in, in their system. Now, the way that we're using generative AI here is once you've scanned that document, we can immediately extract the information from the document pre-populated in your SAP system, all while checking that against mass data that you have in your system. Now, generative AI 
is a real game changer because it allows us to learn in many, many more languages and uh, deal with all the different formats, right? And, and layouts of okay. documents that your your vendors should. That's amazing. So thank yeah. you for sharing that. That's such a lot of that. That's the world that all the AI machine and back office. How about HR operations? And what is the typical use case for HR function? Yeah, that's awesome. Look, there, there's so many. For example, take uh, take the example of, of a manager. Maybe you're looking to, to hire somebody new on, on your team. You can use generative AI to help you write better job descriptions. Because, again, using data in your HR system of how you've previously hired, what are the requirements were for the role, um, years of experience, types of skills. And, Essentially, we can build a better prompt and thereby create better output as well. Now, um, you can also use generative AI when it's about compensation-related discussions. And how should we have the conversation with your uh, with your team members? Like, what are additional pieces of information again that are stored in in your HR system um, that that would guide you to have a more focused conversation? Now, on the hiring side, one of our customers, the Jerusalem Assets, is using generative AI in our success factors line for HR. And they've been able to cut down the time to hire from three to four months to three to four weeks. Wow! So, right, talk about business impact. Impressive, right? Yeah. Um, what about finance, <laughs> right? They're usually more conservative. Mm -hmm. You know, use case you can share it. Yeah, so for example, in, in finance, right, um, we prefer from our customers that in shared service scenarios, there's a tremendous need and tremendous opportunities as well. For example, you know, you post an invoice, um, your, your customer should pay it. But they might dispute it. Maybe there's an error in the invoice that you posted, or they're looking for different terms or something else. Now, your shared service agent needs to review the, the email that they get, the case that they get, and spend a lot of time researching and pulling together information from different sources. Now, using generative AI, we can help you do that a uh, summarization, a collection of, of information mm -hmm. and give you a summary of what this case is about. And we can also help you draft an email uh, response to your customer that you can adjust. Maybe it should be longer, it should be shorter, it mm -hmm. should be a little more assertive, a little friendlier in, in tone. The usual things that, that we know that we can do with generative AI. We see that um, shared service agents can reduce the time to get back to the customer by more than 30% and they love it. Wow. So. Basically, you can automate a lot of repeatable tasks, right? And then not only from report to report, but also from to pay that process for finance. I also see the benefit of making strategic decision faster with real-time data. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the, the core value propositions, one of the core values that we bring, mm -hmm. because it's also built into the applications they use every day, right? So you don't need to build this from scratch. You don't have a huge effort to, to get the benefits of it. It's right in the application you use. That's awesome. So I heard about you have 50 capabilities already with Bing's AI. So what's gonna happen in the next four months? So look, I'm, I'm super excited about the opportunity that, that's ahead of us, also especially together with our customers and for our customers. Like I said, we've already delivered more than 50 capabilities since the end of the year. By the end of this year, uh, actually we'll, we'll have shipped more than 100 across the entire portfolio, right? So whether you're in finance or supply chain or HR, there are additional capabilities coming. So watch the space. That's awesome, Andreas. Thank you so much for unpacking AI with me today. And then thank you, SAP, for your continuous innovation to you know, create an opportunity for us to be at our best. Wonderful. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks.